Greetings, all! Today, we'll be examining the relatively uncommon normal type Pokemon Furfru, the Poodle Pokemon. Though they might not come off as the most gifted of fighters on their own, when it comes to Furfru, it's more about the style than the performance, and this more than holds true in practice. Furfru have quadrupedal canine bodies covered in thick, shaggy white fur, with small black free toed feet and a shaggy tail and head adornment, with their black face, bluish green nose, and red eyes peeking out from the front of their head amidst the shaggy fur. While this tends to be their normal appearance with little else to note, their fur can be cut into a number of different styles freely, in turn resulting in a variety of forms they can be displayed in. Furfru, much like other canine Pokemon, such as the members of the Lillipop and Houndour families, are closely related to modern dogs and in turn share many similarities with them in terms of biology and overall behavior, to the point where they are treated no differently than normal dogs. Even so, these poodles are still distinct from their normal brethren in that they are almost as common in the wild as they are in the possession of trainers and humans in general. In terms of combat abilities, these creatures are fairly limited and only naturally learn a scarce variety of moves, consisting of defensive moves and weak to moderately damaging physical attacks. This is duly reflected as well in both the limited variety of moves they can learn by TM and by a paucity of egg moves available in breeding. While this makes the species a fairly poor choice to work with in most professional battles, these creatures do have some merit to them, as a result sort of their unique and only ability, Fur Coat, which is exclusively shared with the Lowland Persian. In effect, the thick, woolly coat of hair that these beasts possess is extremely effective at absorbing and redirecting kinetic energy from physical attacks, dispersing much of the kinetic energy it receives. In battle, this has the wondrous effect of reducing the damage it takes from physical attacks by a whopping 50%. Sadly, however, this is about the best attribute they have, along with all defensive moves like Cotton Guard, limiting the relative usefulness of the species in battle as a whole. This isn't helped by their stats either, as these beasts underperform in nearly all of their base stats, their only real saving grace being their decent resilience against special assaults alongside their fur coat ability, as well as a decent degree of agility, resulting in their base special defense and speed stats being above average for a fully evolved normal type Pokemon in turn lending them some sense of credence in friendly fights at the very least. What makes these abnormal canines really special, however, is their use in dog shows around the world, especially in places like the Kalos region. The thick coat of fur that covers these beasts grows back at a relatively steady pace if forcefully removed, but if trimmed carefully, it can be made to hold just about any shape and coloration that one desires. The ease with which the hair can actually be cut enables regular dog breeders to work with the thick coat and shape it into any shape that they or their Pokemon's owner desires, creating a living masterpiece of grooming art that humans of all walks of life can stare and be amazed at. There is a startling variety of different looks and appearances out there that can be used on Furfru, and range between simple cuts like the diamond and heart trims to more exotic flavors like the ferro and dandy trims. There are a total of nine major trims that can be found within the Kalos region alone, where they are designated as Guardians of Royalty namely Heart, Star, Diamond, Debutante, Matron, Dandy, Lorraine, Kabuki, and Pharaoh, and dozens more exist across the entire planet with some minor local variations. Not surprisingly, there was even a time where aristocrats would compete to see who could trim their fur fruits fur into the most exquisite style. The fact that this is the most important factor looked at by humans in this species does end up belittling their value as living creatures, but most fur fruit don't seem to mind this and oftentimes develop distinct personalities that can be traced back to a specific type of trim, though they will only allow their long hair to be cut by someone that they actually trust. Sadly for trainers though, these trims are generally for display purposes only. If they are released into the wild or otherwise made to do battle, stress can cause their bodies to go into overdrive and begin producing massive quantities of hair for defense, reducing them to the otherwise thick, disheveled state their coats are usually found in in their natural form. It is at least noted though that these trims can have some purpose for training and battling, as having less hair on their bodies can enable these creatures to move slightly faster, potentially catching opponents off guard in the process. Sometimes, it really isn't just all about the way a Pokemon battles that makes it popular, as looks can go a long way, with Furfru being a great example. Sure, these creatures are a bit blander than even some rodent Pokemon when it comes to combat variety, but they were never really bred for combat in the first place, and thus shouldn't be judged solely on that note, as far as I'm concerned. It's wonderful to have a faithful companion that you can dress up and have fun with in so many ways, and the many different trims and styles that can be applied to the shaggy fur makes fur fur a real treat to the eyes. 
It's even hard for me to say which type of trim I like the best, as they all have something going for them to make them unique and stylish in their own way. These beasts are still surprisingly resilient in the right sorts of conflicts though, and can still have some merit as a defensive fighter. But no matter which way you choose to treat and raise them, they can be more than loyal friends, worth keeping around, if only for the sheer versatility at their disposal when the right groomer is on the job. While they might not always have much use outside of contests and dog shows, Furfru are still fascinating creatures that can help put style to the forefront of any activity they take part in. You might have to go through a lot of hoops to find a groomer to give you just the right trim for them, but it can be more than worth it if you don't mind shelling out the cash to make it happen. Just do yourself a favor and make sure that you treat them well and keep their trim in top form. Otherwise, the natural fur may likely overtake it all, forcing you to shell out even more money just to have them trimmed all over again. Thank you for watching this video. It brings me great joy to be able to speak to you all in the world each and every time we meet like this, to explore the many different facets of both the world of Pokemon as we know it, and the world as we live it, through every adventure we have with Pokemon by our side. If you'd like to, please subscribe, ring the bell, and all that jazz, to keep yourself updated on content uploads and other materials of the like. You can also follow me on Twitter if you'd like to know right away when something new is uploaded, and my written works, from which most of this is based on, can be found on DeviantArt. Links to both can be found in the description down below. Remember that the world of Pokemon is a place full of wonder and mystery, and you never know what to expect. So stay vigilant, keep watch, and always be prepared for the unexpected. Until next time, trainers and friends of all sorts, have a wonderful time.